What's up, folks? Welcome to Woodworking Against the Grain. We're back in the kitchen today making a chocolate cake with chocolate icing. This is going to be a big four-layer chocolate cake with lots of good chocolate buttercream icing on it. So stay tuned. What we got in the mixer here so far already is four cups of sugar and a cup of coconut oil. This cake recipe doesn't call for butter in the cake batter, but it does in the icing. This one is made more with uh, coconut oil instead of butter. I've had this on. I forgot to turn the camera on when I first started this, so I had to start over. And a couple of these steps we've already got going on here. So we've got sugar and oil in the mixture. Kind of creaming that up good here. And we're sifting our dry stuff over here. I've got a cup and a half of cocoa powder, about three and a half cups of flour, and a tablespoon of baking powder, a tablespoon of baking soda, and a couple of teaspoons of salt. Now, all three of those ingredients are very important when you're baking a cake. I, even though the cake's going to be sweet, I promise you, if you don't put a little bit of salt in it, it won't be good. It'll be bland. It'll taste very flat and will lack a depth of flavor that you don't want to miss. So be sure and put a little bit of salt in your sweets. It doesn't have to be cake. If you're making anything sweet, it needs a little bit of salt. If you're making a peach cobbler, put some salt in it. Put a little bit of salt in a chocolate pie or a coconut pie. It just needs a little bit of salt to accent the sweet. We're going to sift all this back together again into this bowl till we get all this one good color here. And we get all the lumps and chunks and knots out of all this dry stuff. Don't be afraid to over sift your dry ingredients. You can't hurt them. Remember, anything that's too big to go through the holes of the sifter doesn't have any business in your cake to start with. That's coming along pretty good. Didn't have a whole lot to mash through that time. But we're going to run this back through again until you can't tell where the flour starts and the cocoa stops. Got a couple of good big bowls here that we can sift this stuff into and try not to make too big a mess. I've made this cake several times, and it turns out really good every time. It's a big hit anywhere you take this cake. You don't run across very many people in your lifetime that don't like some chocolate cake. If you find a lot of pe people that don't like chocolate cake, you probably need to stay away from them because there's probably a, a bigger problem than that inside their head if they don't like good chocolate cake. Once we get these dry ingredients sifted here one more time, we're going to call that good, I think. Just about got all the lumps out of that. Flour and the cocoa were mixed up good, along with our salt and our baking soda and our baking powder. I'm going to stop this mixer here and scrape down the sides of this bowl. Got this coconut oil and this sugar mixture here coming together pretty good. Remember, as long as you got just oil and sugar or butter and sugar in your mixture, you can't really over mix that. You can mix that up for about as long as you want to while you've got this other stuff going on over here. What we're going to do now, we got four whole eggs in this bowl. We're going to add these eggs, add them one at a time, let them stir in there real good. This is really going to add some body to the batter, and it's really going to make the cake taste rich. We get three or four of these good farm eggs in here. Get them mixed in good. We'll scrape down the bowl one more time, and then we'll start putting this stuff together. <clears throat> This is a pretty basic chocolate cake recipe. It's got one little trick to it that you don't see in a lot of recipes, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. In just a minute, we're going to start adding this flour 
and cocoa to this batter right here. We're going to alternate it with the milk. You got two cups of whole milk right here. Don't use low-fat milk in a cake like this. If you need low-fat milk, you don't need this cake. We've got that mixed in pretty good with the eggs. We're going to give this another good scrape down. I know this is a little bit time consuming, but I'm going to tell you something. You want to make a good cake, you got to be patient. You got to give yourself time. Put some love into it. If you're in a big hurry for a cake, buy a mix. It won't be any good, but you can tell people you made a cake. If you want one that's really off the chain tasty, don't be in a great big hurry about it. And we got this eggs and sugar and oil going here. It's mixed together really well. You want to turn that mixer speed down real slow to start with because you'll get flour in your face if you don't. We're going to spoon in some of this flour. Now to start with, this batter is going to be pretty thick. We'll put a few spoonfuls of flour in there and then we're going to add a little bit of this milk. Let that stir around in here. Now I've got four cake pans over here that are already prepared. They have got coconut oil on the bottom of them. And on top of the coconut oil, I have dusted them with some granulated sugar. My goal in doing that is that these four cakes, when they come out of the oven, won't be the least bit stuck to the pan. Because if they stick to the pan and you can't get them out, all this right here is pretty, pretty much for nothing. You get a stuck cake that you got to dig out of the pans with a spoon. It's almost impossible to put any icing on it. We don't want that. So you take a little time. Buy yourself, if you're going to make cakes, buy yourself some good non-stick cake pans. And don't trust the non-stick on them. Go ahead and grease them and flour them or grease them and sugar them anyway because you're not going to get that surface too slick. My experience has been if a cake can stick, it will stick on me, and I don't like that. I'm going to tell you all something that happened to me. The reason I know that you don't want to overbeat your flour. When I first started learning how to make cakes, we live about two and a half miles from the nearest store. Well, I realized during the process of making this cake one time, not this cake, I don't guess, but some particular cake I was making, that I didn't have enough uh, I didn't have any vanilla flavoring. So I had put all the flour and sugar, the whole cake was, you know, in the mixer ready to, to go, except he needed about a tablespoon or a teaspoon of vanilla. So I went two and a half miles to the store, bought a bottle of vanilla flavoring while that cake was mixing. I just left the mixer on. Got back, you know, everything looked okay. But I put that cake in the oven, and when it came out of there, you couldn't hardly cut it with a chainsaw. And over here, this is a trick to this cake. I've got two cups of boiling water right here. We're going to pour this boiling water into this batter right before we put it into our pans, and it's going to take this thick batter and make it very Thin. So you want to turn your mixer speed down as slow as it'll go and start drizzling in two cups of boiling water. Now this water is just under a boil. It has been boiling. And after you get that in there, you want to turn that mixer off pretty quick because it begins to slosh on you. Now, Got that stirred in there pretty good. All we lack is just getting this thin batter now transferred to our cake pans. Once it's in there, we're going to put it in a 350-degree oven for about 30 minutes. When it comes out, we'll let it cool. We'll make a buttercream chocolate icing to go on top of it. 
I just took these out of the oven, so we're going to let them cool in these pans for about five minutes, and then we're going to turn them out onto some racks and let them get down to room temperature before we try to put any kind of icing on them. All right, folks, we're back. Got our cake out of the oven. We're about ready to make some chocolate buttercream icing to go on in here. What I've got going on right here in this bowl is a cup of melted butter. To that melted butter, I am about to add a cup and a fourth of cocoa. You want to add this to this melted butter kind of slow and stir it in. You want to spoon your cocoa when you're measuring it. You want to do that with flour too because if you scoop it out with a measuring cup, you're going to pack it pretty tight and you're going to get quite a bit more than you think than you think you are. When you're measuring flour or cocoa or cornstarch, you want to spoon that into your measuring cup. That way, when you are level full there, you're not, you're not packed, and you don't have quite a bit more of that stuff than you think you do. Now we want to kind of work this into this butter till we get it all moistened up a little bit here. Our cake has kind of turned out in a bittersweet way. You know, I talked to you when we were making that cake about how important it is to prepare your pans so hopefully your cake doesn't stick. Well, out of four of these layers, two of them stuck a little bit, but I think we can salvage it. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna give up just yet and, and start over. We're gonna try to, to salvage this and I'll show you how to work with a cake that's somewhat falling apart on you. I think we can glue this back together with some icing and by the time we get done with it I don't think you'll even be able to tell that it's stuck. All right we've got our cocoa and our butter mixed up pretty good here. Got the cocoa moistened anyway. What we're going to do now is put it in the bottom of the mixer bowl here. That looks really good, but you don't want to take a bite of that yet because there's not any sweetener in that whatsoever. And it is going to be a very bitter bite if you take one. Resist that temptation to taste of this until after you get some sugar in this stuff. Then it's a whole lot better to eat. We get all of this butter and cocoa mixture that we can out of this bowl. Now, what we want to do here is turn this mixer on pretty slow. And we're going to start adding powdered sugar a little bit at a time we get a pretty good volume of icing here. We're going to, it's going to take a lot of icing to fix this cake. So we, we've doubled the icing recipe. Takes a little while to get this done. You got to add this powdered sugar really slow or it blows all over the house. Also got to add a little bit of milk to this recipe just Just sort of a splash at a time. Probably about a third. Since we're doubling it, maybe maybe a half a cup of milk. You don't have to measure it out precisely. Just watch the consistency of your icing. And when it's very spreadable and pliable, you'll know you've got that just about right. We're going to pretty much use this whole bag of powdered sugar here so I know when I get to the bottom of that bag that I need to have the spreading consistency just about right. We're also going to put a teaspoon of vanilla flavoring in this. 
anytime that you make cake icing, you want to always taste of it. Make sure it's good. If it's not good, you have to start all over. That's pretty yummy there. All right, uh, my cameraman is busy today, so I'm having to do all this from a tripod, so not going to be quite as, get to see quite as much as you normally would. We're going to try put some icing on this cake here. Got our first layer on the cake pan. What we want to do now is just put a thin layer just on the top of that. And I'll try to show you some of the problems we had with that other, a couple of the other layers that didn't want to come out of the pan too good today. See if we can remedy some of that problem. I hope we can make it look halfway right. We're going to try to get one of these uh, layers that's a little bit damaged here off of this rack if we can get it on top of this other layer of cake right here without making too big a mess oh yeah that's not going to be too bad maybe now that's pretty good on top what we're going to try to do now if we can we'll try to go around the edges of this cake with icing. I think technically what I'm calling icing here is really frosting. The food police would probably correct me on that. Icing I think really is a when you when you call it icing it's a process that has been cooked. This is more of just a frosting buttercream frosting, but I don't really care what you call it. Pretty much it's just butter and, and sugar, so it's delicious, whatever you call it. Now that's a good piece of cake right there. Thanks for watching. Come back to see us.